To continue my series on solving mathematics in the movies and on TV shows, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on the 26th series finale of The Simpsons, known as The Mathlete's Feet. Let's dive straight into it. Obviously the first thing that we see is the math tournament today. It says good seats will always be available. So that was setting the scene for the start of the episode. The first math that we see is when the mathletes put on their uniform. And if you can see there is on their t-shirts, it says Springfield. And then it says pi does not equal A over B. And this is math team. So the first maths that we see in this is uh, this pi does not equal a over b, and that is alluding to the fact that pi is a transcendental number, and therefore it cannot be written as a ratio. So you cannot write pi as a over b, which is what this bit of math says on the front of their tops there. Now, just as a little side note, I've been writing some notes alongside each of these images. So all I said was that pi is a transcendental number, which are numbers that are not the root of any integer polynomials. So for those of you that were wondering what a transcendental number is, that's the definition right there. The next maths that we see is when Homer starts uh, reading today's maths joke. Although in the actual episode, he's not laughing at the maths joke. He's laughing at a dog with uh, some box on its head. Uh, but anyway, this maths joke, uh, hopefully mathematicians, you'll have seen this one before. It's quite a common one. And all this is saying is we have the square root of minus one, which hopefully if you know some sort of maths, you'll know that that's I, that's the imaginary number. Then we have two cubed which is eight so eight we have a sum so this is known as sum and then we have pi here as well and obviously if you say that out loud it says i ate some pi so that was the math joke uh, at the start of the episode which yeah a classic one in mathematics <laughs> on the topic of math jokes pop your favorite math joke in the comment section because i'd be curious to see what everyone's favorites are the next part of maths that we see is when we see the opponents for the mathlete in the mathlete tournament and they are known as i think it's not equals or null equals i couldn't quite hear what it said in the episode but i think it said not equals and what i really liked about this was the subtlety of the not equal sign on their shirts so hopefully you can see it there yeah that's the not equal sign which i think as as far as mathletes go i think that's quite a cool quite a cool name and quite a cool symbol as well then when the waverly hills mathletes team is getting introduced the end member says what did the right angle triangle say to the wider angle and then they go on to say you're obtuse and the reason that is is because a right angle triangle as i've illustrated at the bottom here that's what a right angle triangle looks like but a wider angle, which is given by this here, is said to be obtuse if the angle is greater than 90 degrees or less than 180. So essentially the 90 degree angle is saying to the wider angle, you're obtuse. And that's because the definition of a wider angle uh, can be obtuse. Then we move on to the introduction of each of the teams in the episode. And they both have sort of a film to show to be like, this is what, you know, this is our mathletes team. And Waverly Hills had, obviously the idea is that this is from a, a very wealthy school. They have a lot of money to put into uh, education. And they finalise their presentation by saying that the additional equations in that presentation was by Stephen Hawking, which, uh, yeah, I just thought was a little bit funny. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm hoping everybody will know who Stephen Hawking is but if you don't little image of him there hopefully that might jog your memory but he was an english theoretical physicist and made massive advancements in the field of black holes as well as other areas in physics and mathematics as well the next bit of maths that i noticed in the episode was the gold chain hanging around the middle person's neck here and uh, yeah it's it's a gold chain of pi which i just liked a little bit of math there as well during the episode the characters that i just previously showed you with the gold chain around the neck previous mathlete winners basically have a lot of money and they decided to invest that money into the school. For that reason, things like chalkboards were taken down and replaced with you know, smart boards. I just thought I would include that in there because as a mathematician myself, chalkboards, I love a whiteboard, but there's just something about a chalkboard that I just absolutely love. When I went to do my master's at Cambridge, all of the boards were chalkboards, which was a bit different to my undergrad because they were all whiteboards. And yeah, there's just something about a mathematician and a chalkboard that, that I just love. So I thought I'd include that in there just as a, a little subtlety. Now we move on to some actual calculating mathematics. And this is where there's a rematch between the two schools at the end of the episode. And we're gonna do a bit of a deep dive into what the questions were and just answer them really. So the first question that we had was this here. I'm just highlighting it. 
and basically just says what what is this and what I've done here is I've basically just reduced things down so the first thing that I did again remembering uh, bod mass bid mass whatever it is that you you like to call it expanded out the brackets so we had two minus six is minus four here that was all I did in the in the first line the next line I performed that multiplication so we got minus seven multiplied by minus four which is plus 28 so that's where we got the plus 28 there from and then I added in the brackets as well so added 6 plus 28 plus 2 which gives us 36 and then all you do is 5 minus 36 plus 4 uh, and we get the answer that is minus 27 which is what is seen in the episode itself so quite a nice easy one there this next question was about interval notation and all it says is we have this set here which is s so we have the set S and it's for X belonging to the reals and it's where X is between minus three and four. And in interval notation, hopefully people will know this. If not, then this is the answer. The answer is given by this and that's what's known as interval notation. The next question was this question here and I like this because it was uh, simultaneous equations again I'm just going to highlight the steps that I've taken here but essentially we had these two simultaneous equations here so we have this one and this one which are one and two and I did a little trick here which is where you can rewrite equation one and obtain I'll just zoom in here so we can see it a little bit better where you can obtain x minus one all squared and the reason I did that is because there's an x minus one all squared in equation two so then what you obtain is, and I've called it equation three here. So by rewriting one, you can rewrite one in this format here, which is x minus one all squared equals 18 minus y squared. I've denoted that as equation number three. And then all that's left to do is take this equation number three, because we have an x minus one all squared in it. You can minus equation two, which also has an x minus one squared, that will get rid of the x's, and then you're left with this equation here, which gives you um, an equation in terms of y, and then we just simplify, and in simplifying we find that 16y equals 48, which therefore implies that y equals three, so we have the value for y. All that's left to do is substitute that back in. I chose to substitute it back into equation three, um, just because it's quite a neat form of the equation and in doing so what you can find is that x minus 1 equals plus or minus 3 which means there's two values for x so all you do is take the plus or the minus to find out what the value of x is and what you find is that x is minus 2 when y equals 3 and x also equals 4 when y equals 3 as well and that's the answer and that's the answer that we see uh, in the episode as well I don't know about you but I absolutely love simultaneous equations that might just be because I'm a big maths nerd but it was one of the first things that I learned when introducing algebra into mathematics and I always found it really really fascinating and it's often things like that that you forget when you then go on to do some more advanced mathematics it's the simple things and for me I've been using brilliant.org as a platform to refresh my memory on a lot of the maths that I learned when I was younger just to check that I a still know it and b if I do know it I can do it fast. I guess that's the competitive side of mathematics for me is ensuring that I remember everything that I've learned because that is so incredibly important. So for those of you that don't know Brilliant is a platform where you learn by doing. There are thousands of lessons in mathematics, data, programming, AI and science. What I love so much is that each lesson allows you to problem solve while also playing with concepts which as a method is actually six times more efficient than simply watching lectures. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, then head to brilliant.org forward slash Ellie Slytome or click the link in the pinned comment or in the description of this video. And in doing so, you'll also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thank you so much to Brilliant for allowing me to continue making cool videos like these. Now let's get back to the maths. This next question I really, really like. So I've got the solution here. This is what was asked in the question and I decided to rewrite the square root and the x's uh, by their power. So x is the same as x to the power 1, the square root of x is the same as x to the power half, uh, and then in doing so I get this equation here, and then because there's an x on either side, I factorise it out, so I factorise the x out of here. You can check this works by just multiplying out and you'll get the same equation as above here, and yeah, then we just have this equation here for x so we know that x must either equal 0 by this 
x here, or the square root of x must equal 1 from this bracket here. So we end up with x equals 0 or x equals 1 for this question, which, yeah, I really liked. Next question, again, really nice. Just substitute x equals 7 into the equation there. And here is the solution. We essentially just take what we had originally had, substitute x equals 7 in, which we've done there, do some simplifying, and in doing so, we get the answer that is 5.75 and again we see that in the episode itself. We then have this question which I really really like. It's basically saying that we have a plus b squared equals 25 and a minus b squared equals 45. So what is a squared plus b squared? And the solution to this I think is really neat personally. All I did was I wrote out what we had originally which is what I've just said. So a plus b squared equals 25, a minus b squared is 45. You can expand both of these out which is what I've done here to get equation one and equation two and then if you look closely we have these two terms here which will essentially cancel out if we add them together leaving us with two lots of a squared plus two lots of b squared and obviously the question is asking for a squared plus b squared so all we do is divide by two and we get the answer which is a squared plus b squared equals 35 which yeah i, I also really like this question as well one of the final bits of maths that we see is this equation here, which is a simultaneous equation. And the solution to that is very, very simple. I've noted down what the equations were. So we have this equation and then we have this equation here. You can rearrange one of these for x, substitute back in and you'll get the same answer. But the eagle eyed amongst us might notice that you can just add these two together to get this equation here. And in the question, it's asking us what 3x plus 5y is. And if we divide this here by 2, we get the answer. And the answer is 6. The final question that we see is this here, which says draw three straight lines to construct nine non-overlapping triangles. And this is where Bart looks at Homer and notices that the M is very similar to the hair that he has uh, around his ear and yeah, then manages to come up with the solution. And the solution is this here. So we have a line going through here, a line going through here and another line going through here. And in doing so, we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triangles. There's probably some form of mathematical proof that you can do with geometry, but I'm hoping to integrate some more coding into my YouTube channel. So yeah, I might do a, a simulation to see if I can solve this question. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. But the very final piece of maths that we see in The Simpsons is when the mathletes win the uh, competition and it's just the banner at the end here that says, congratulations, Springfield mathletes, no one is, and then a greater, greater than sign, you. So it's saying no one is greater than you, which I thought was a really nice way to end the episode.